to walk. But uh, we have this uh, sculpture by Charles Simmons, and I've got a lot of works by Charles Simmons on purpose. <laughs> we were going to do a show in Atlanta uh, years ago with Charles's work and Charles. And we were up to about 63, five pieces, and the man was in an automobile accident, and it just kind of all came to close. And so I had them stored, and through the years, Linda and I found places for them in the yard. And, and before, them. <laughs> Yeah, and before <laughs> we knew what happened, we, we were on our way to a sculpture garden. Of course, uh, one of our inspirations was being friends with Betty and Billy Branch, for crying out loud, going over to Betty's house was always the thrill. Betty would take her n new pieces and some pieces that she could retain without um, people clamoring for them and uh, just uh, show us around her yard. And I said, gosh, a private garden filled with sculpture. Beautiful, gorgeous garden. Yeah, how could yes. anybody not want to act? Yeah. Now, these are two really rough uh, cut stones by Charles Simmons again. Uh, it's the banjo lute player on the left, and he always called the one on the right Moses. Um, I think, well, he was the Reverend Charles, and so he always claimed that he had religious themes to his pieces, but we discovered later he didn't. But there is a piece here that I'll... I realized that uh, that wasn't the case. But these are the uh, three wise men, or we call them the, the trio. Actually, it's uh, musicians. There's nothing wise about these stone heads. But they're, we just fell in love with the primitive work and collected it for a long time. And now we're back into the fine arts doing the... Uh, the regional works of our loved artists around here. And so we've got a little bit of both in the yard, but we've got a whole lot of Charles Simmons, who was a practicing minister. He would be invited to uh, different churches in the black community and around the Mount Airy area. Um, we get up to this Paul Ostaseski that we have. Um, good friends with Paul grew up with him. We went to high school together and, uh, Parted for our college and career in the Army days, and then got back together, and we uh, just enjoyed having uh, his wonderful pieces. We watched him grow through the years. His studio shop was next door to our um, studio on Starkey Road when we had a gallery there, the Dorsey Gallery, back in the 70s, early 70s, and Paul was becoming quite active and famous and growing leaps and bounds and was selling sculpture in the D.C. area and and then bless his heart uh, died on us at a very early age but Paul's just been uh, his his work has just been around Ronick for plenty of years and enjoyed it, it was a piece that uh, at the back entrance to Hunting Hills one on Liberty Road at J.D. Fralin's business uh, the library, the old library on in Ronan County on 419 has one of the bigger ones of Paul's. Uh, and that went with the building when the county relinquished it. But uh, it's a nice piece. They're built out of core 10 steel, and the edges, they're not solid uh, shapes. They're hollow, and he's done edge work that is just <laughs> phenomenal. I mean, they're ruler straight and just gorgeous, but it's out of Corton steel that rusts to a certain point, and that's what you see. It'll never go any further. That's what they build the bridges in uh, Virginia. Right. Uh, he's actually represented in the Taubman's permanent collection, and he won the, the Sidewalk Art Show a uh, you know, number of years ago, and there's an article right. from, from that time period. Uh, and it was in our legacies uh, exhibition. So again, yeah, you're right. Uh, a beloved artist in our community and very well known. And we're showing yeah, yeah. Hearing now the and, legacy and, as well. Yeah, this the piece that we just looked at of Paul's was in the show. And I'm sure some people will have recognized it, but uh, that indeed was in the show. And then there was another one that we had that was in the show 
that uh, we had sold right after the show. And it found it nice home. It went to Smith Mountain Lake and looked real nice. Linda and I went out there to see how nice it looked in their setting, and it was just heaven. It was great. And behind me, or to the back of me, is uh, a Betty Branch. And this is Dragon Tooth, I believe is the correct title for it. And it is a magnificent piece. It's got, it's on a marble base, it's out of bronze. We're gonna show the, uh, the aerial view of your property that Linda was so kind to, uh, uh, to sketch out because that'll help everybody viewing to know where we're at. And I know you shared, okay. with, you shared with me also, uh, you know, the Cape, the Cape Cod setting is where you're at and you're off of 221, is that correct? Yes, that's right. We're uh, off of 221. We're about three miles out of uh, case, or out of 419, and just come south on 221 and pay your ten dollars, and you can come up into our neighborhood. <laughs> and, and you've lived there for 48 years, so you know something. Yep. That, yeah, you know, that's right. And you've built just a beautiful home. Um, so what we're doing is we're going down. Um, a little slope between the house and three, what we call the flat, and we're heading to number three and four. Three and four, I think. The uh, big Charles Simmons of, well, we'll go backwards here. Uh, this will be, this is Paul Ostaseski's. This is number four. This is called Stamen, and it's a real nice piece out of steel also. And, uh, a steel piece that Paul had done way back in the 70s, and we were lucky enough to grab. It was um very simple stylized and just talk to us there's a, a nice plant and so we planted around it and it was mm -hmm. just wonderful and now we work what we call the flats down here we don't have much flat land but this uh this is our flat part this but this is, is three. this is number three on the chart there this is charles simmons that's our crouched um, cougar and then we grew the hedge around it, and um, it's about time to raise the platform. We like it flat, so when the hedge is flat, the, the, the granite is flat with it, and the crouched tiger just looks more menacing. I mean, crouched uh, cougar looks more menacing that way, but it's, it's a gorgeous piece, and as I said before, we love the primitive folk art, uh, Charles Simmons, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Dorsey. <laughs> Dorsey went to art school and became an illustrator and uh, did you know, work and was at the, in the Army as well and returned to the Roanoke Valley and if, as you, as many of us know, established a successful wholesale picture frame molding business and also, you know, galleries. I think your first gallery was in the 1970s uh, when you were in the art Yeah, scene, early, right? early 70s. Right, and, that's correct. You know, very local, so native to, to Roanoke, grew up in South South Roanoke, and graduated from Patrick Henry High School. That's correct. I'm a local and, boy. And I will say, you know, <laughs> just a big thank you because you've been involved in the museum for, for years and years and have been such a friend and supporter of the museum, uh, you know, in terms of most recently, you know, Sidewalk Art Show for so many years, but also the Bannon exhibition with helping with the framing and supporting that. And right now we have on loan from your gallery many of the Gillespie pieces in Enchanting Blue Ridge region. So thanks again to both of you. What we've done is, is come down the hill on the left side of the house and um, Linda says, this is number five. This is uh, Jimmy Houston. Jimmy comes to run, I think, annually for the um, Sidewalk Art Show. And that's where we ran into him. And he has done all these strange little things um, from, uh, I don't know how to, tabletops that are smaller than this uh, to really phenomenal ribbon pieces like this. We've had bigger ones. Um, but this is one that uh, we really like and uh, just enjoy the movement in it. It's just a, just a real 
fun piece. Jimmy's a, a good sculptor. Yeah. We, don't, well, we, we, don't, have, we don't have far. We actually have nine larger sculptures, and then the Charles Simmons are the smaller type. Smaller pieces. Yeah, yeah. along the, the paths. The, and, we're just aging them in the, in the <laughs> environment. They have to get used to somebody's garden to... When they find their home, they'll be very happy because they'll have already experienced a nice home. That's the way Linda talks to our yeah. sculptures. <laughs> this is their home. Now there's a Mr. Squirrel, Linda. Anyway. Uh, that's, that's beautiful. This Which is, one is this one? This is number six? Yeah, this is <laughs> the unknown. Um, we uh, just came in from the side yard, and we're going up a, a path that we created uh, to move from one side of the house to the other on the back side because all of this was woods, and so we beat the brush back. But this is a piece. Linda and I were in New York and went to Art Expo and stumbled across this piece and just couldn't couldn't get away and uh, probably walked around the show of the artist, I don't know how many times, but we came back and we bought it. and finally had it uh, shipped to us, and it was a couple of months later that we got it. But it's just been wonderful for us, and somehow, I mean, the fellows from uh, out west, and we just have lost the file somehow and cannot recall his name, uh, but it's just, uh, it's made out of um, copper, and it's a steel ball that's painted with a steel painted base. And we have it in our bed. And please notice our little wild uh, cactus growing over here. <laughs> they're beautiful. And when they're all blooming at one time, it's actually really cool. Really, really enjoyable. And so we're going to uh, go up the small grade. Oh, well, there's another Charles Simmons. And that's a, the, the, the lady shopper. And <laughs> it's just. Charles Simmons, oh my. He's speaking Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So we collect, Linda and I collected a lot of uh, religious art and enjoyed it for years. And um, a lot of mostly crucifixes and uh, last suppers and weren't particularly, uh, we just liked the feeling that they evoked and usually they were done in a manner which was very soothing and warming. But, so there's the little owl perched up. Uh, that's a he's in rough shape. Too much weather and not enough roof. Um, and through the years, we've had to clear and clear and clear and clear and clear. And we're we're those kind of people that like to do it ourselves. But we beat this back years ago and have continued to keep it down. And in the last couple of years, we've been planting uh, rhododendron and. Um, we've got some other things mixed in there that I wouldn't know what to call them, but they're yeah, windy. And then we have, uh, let me get the shadow there. That's a little angel that Mr. Reverend Simmons carved. It's uh, <laughs> real cute. And then, uh, let's see, Holly's walking under the rhododendron archway, and there's another uh, cross with Christ. And they're quite uh, they're quite moving. We like the primitive art, as I said, and uh, carving into stone is, I'm sure, not a pleasure. Uh, and then, Linda, this is one of your favorite little rides, isn't it? The elephant. That's well, our elephant. I mean, trunkless elephant. <laughs> and ahead of that is our saxophone player. This is Charles Simmons. Um, son's work and I, I don't think he continued with it i hadn't heard or seen him in years so i don't actually know that but i hadn't heard of him in the art world either but uh, that was one of his efforts of a saxophone player and i just had to support him on that i liked it and then here we have the little choir boy or we call him the prayer boy and uh He's just sitting there in his garden with his sleepy eyes. He's been, yeah, he's just kind of cute. It's just, uh, so we walk, you know, this is what we call our two drink uh, walk. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, we fix our drinks and walk through the yard. And now we're going to come out of the path and go left. And we're going to uh, head over to. 
uh, rod Roth teeth. Anyway, this is a piece out of aluminum, and he's got it. He's from Charlottesville, and has them around the city there, and it's just it's fun all times of the year to stand up on the driveway as you come in and look down, and you've got this nice glistening tree looking at us, and uh, it's just fun. And there's a lot of areas here that we could. Uh, uh, I guess play sculptures, but there's a point of ridiculousness. Uh, one of the areas in which we well, on the wind too. <laughs> yeah, it's but uh, going downhill here, if if we can get a shot going downhill, we always thought of another path going down there. We have <laughs> um, we, we have water down. That's where the water comes. The, the spring is, and there's a spring up in the woods here, and starts a little little wet creek and. We always thought that would be fun to have a sculpture garden there too. <laughs> it would be pretty. How many acres? So, how many acres do you live on? So as we look at this, uh, beautiful... I think it's like two and a third acres or something. Two and a three quarters. Yeah, it's uh, not a lot, but when you develop it or try to develop it all, it becomes monumental. It's really hard work to keep up a yard, a sizable yard. I'm not saying it's impossible, but at our age, it seems to be more so. This is our Charles Simmons uh, bear. And a little bit of bird. And, and some bird gift. We always uh, enjoy the gift. That, oh. uh, yeah, Linda wants you to see how big her is. Her her this is her $1.99 from, from Food Lion. Yeah, 19... 70. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was only seven feet tall. Yeah, and when they're blooming, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've got some. And they loved me back. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Showing the, we're showing the image of of um, Charles Simmons and you, and I don't know what time yeah. frame was that. I don't know. I had gray hair, so I must have. I was over age eighteen, I guess. <laughs> 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 late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, late 80s, early 90s. Okay. Well, here's uh, one. Uh, I believe uh, it maybe Kevin. I, I've lost my memory on this one. Uh, but it's uh, the dad and his son riding the elephant. Oh, that's Charles Simmons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice picture. That's a nice picture. Yeah. 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 We're going to hopefully get into some shade. This is coming around the side of the left side of the house quite tightly. Here's a Charles Simmons turtle that I broke the head off. <laughs> but it's still a nice turtle. Still a nice turtle. Car goes down and just crawls up my hill and he doesn't get very far. Oh, we have an unknown uh, sculpture here. It's a little turtle again. Uh, nice metal piece. I just love the simplicity of it, and it says turtle. I love it. And we have it mounted on a Belgian block just to elevate it. Not a real artsy way, but it does elevate it. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's a that's Bruce's piece, of course. Like I said, it's probably ten or so feet, and the base is probably twelve feet, and out of that heavy granite. And that, One of the things you shared, yeah. Dorsey, too, was you know those that you've collected are are really good friends, and we can see that as you as you you know described yeah, and showed. Absolutely. You know, it's just it, it's close to your hearts. And here we have a little half moon. Are we still visual? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, this is a crescent moon by Mr. Simmons, and there's a, just two pieces down here, and then we'll go back up on the deck. And so, if you want to slip down here, this is our cut through to the to the shed or to the path, which will take us left or right. And there we have what I was talking about earlier: the dog or the cat. I mean, the dog or the horse, and uh, it's just. Nice little piece, and the uh, soft stone out here doesn't weather necessarily well, but it does weather. And uh, I mean, a lot of these have been out here for 30 years, 40 years, mm -hmm. 30 years, yeah, anyway. 30 years. 30 years. So it, they do pretty well. And 
it's fun to place them around. It's fun to walk around, remember buying them, remember the people that we bought them from. And there we have a little buffalo. Real, <laughs> a little folk art dog. <laughs> anyway, that was a nice little muffler dog, Dachshund. We have a lot of those that need to be repainted, but uh, their time is up. So we'll probably find some young couple to give them to as we, as we pass them up. Yeah. And then we're coming back up onto the to level land. Now we're coming up onto the deck. This is where we live. And and we've got I'll let Linda talk and no. yes, I'm gonna go get the drink. About it. Yeah. No well, Oh the the fawn by Betty Grant. I mean by uh, Angus Holanovich. So the baby fawn um that we've had for a little while and um I just it's just well, it's a, adorable. She's um or he uh captured our heart and Inga she always put her heart um, right in her hands and out onto the sculptures and molded these beautiful pieces. And it's just quite nice here. It's home. It, yeah, it's our nest. We built this nest in Eden mm -hmm. and lucky enough have kept it to this point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I guess we'd like to toast the Todman for crying out loud. I'm sure everybody's ready to get us off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, uh, Here's to the Taubman Museum. Yes. And, and thank all you the, so much for inviting us. Yes. And, and uh, there's so many people, good people here behind you that I think the museum is going to do real well and it'll just embed us deeper into the core and make the museum even greater than it is. It's just fabulous to have a museum like this in our town, our little valley. It's just wonderful living here. And we like our little perch here on Sunnycrest. And so I, I don't know how to say goodbye. Oh, no. <laughs> thank you, Dorsey and Linda. It was wonderful. Oh, Betty, thank, thank you. you. Oh, Betty. I love it. Well, and, and thank you, thank you, Dorsey and Linda, for, for sharing.